on NHL.com. They titled the post-game article for this matchup, Wild Wings. Because the Detroit Red Wings have just defeated the Buffalo Sabres and have taken back a playoff spot. And this was a very, very unique game. Something that I don't think Wings fans we have seen in a really long time. When was the last time the Wings had a good start? They got off to a quick early lead and they held on to the lead for the entire game. What a weird, weird game. Huh. They're capable of doing that, eh? They are. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Now, Buffalo Sabres fans, if you're tuning in here, okay, there's nothing too much to lose out on. You guys were not really too deep into that postseason race, but you played a hard-fought game. 38 shots for the Buffalo Sabres and only one goal. Alex Lyon, baby. Have yourself an evening. But the Detroit Red Wings defeat Buffalo 3-1 after scoring three goals in the first seven minutes of the game. They pretty much just go on cruise control to round out the remaining 40 minutes after the first period. And all in all, when you talk about the chances, you talk about the expected goals... I mean, Buffalo has the slight edge there, according to all the metrics, but really, this was an evenly matched game, as evenly matched games can come and go. Especially when you consider the defenseman situation. Now, we'll get into the goals and everything real quick, but I wanted to talk about a few interesting notes and stats about today's Wings victory over the Sabres. Okay, so Alex Lyon, as we had said, he had 37 saves on 38 shots a game, so a 974 save percentage. Great. You want to talk about defensemen? Okay, we can talk about defensemen. Guess who led the Red Wings in time on ice today? Of course, Alex Lyon did. He had 60 minutes, but the guy who had the second most time on ice in this game for Motown was none other than Mo Sider, who had 27 minutes of time on ice. Moritz Sider played half the gosh darn game. Okay. I see you, Derek Lalonde. I called him out yesterday for putting Austin Zarnick between Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit, but I was unfamiliar with your game. Okay, if this comes with giving Cider every other shift, pretty much, okay, I can live with that. That's great. You also talk about Mo Cider and the fact that this guy had six hits and ten blocked shots. Oh my gosh. Dude, I've been talking about my fantasy hockey league this entire year. It's over now. I mean, I haven't talked about it in a few weeks because it's gone. But this stat line, he is a monster. This is the second time in three games and the third time in four games where Mo Sider has had five plus blocks in a game. And this game tonight just happened to have had the best result out of them all because some of the other games, I mean, against the Florida Panthers, Mo Sider played 28 minutes and... We're seeing a lot more trust being placed in this guy. The best part is, when they're trying to shut out the game at the end here, not shut out as in, like, you know, keep the Buffalo Sabres to zero goals, when they're trying to clear out the game and win at the end of regulation, you have Mo Sider and Simon Edvinson out there. Oh, that is great. Simon, by the way, played himself the third highest ice time compared to all the other defensemen. Ben Sherratt had 23 minutes, Simon Edvinson had 19. Jeff Petrie played the fewest amount of minutes for defensemen in this game. He had 15 minutes and an assist. We haven't even talked about the goals yet, but just going over the defensive situation, this was pretty much perfect when you talk about what Wings fans pretty much wanted to see. Now, let's go over into the goals here. Scoring started out quick and hot just 53 seconds into the frame. All it took was Lucas Raymond to come right in, shoot, and score. Unassisted goal off of the turnover there. Lucas Raymond doing it all by himself. That's what you want to see. 
taking advantage of defensive lapses and being able to capitalize. Lucas Raymond makes it one nothing. all it takes is one minute. Give it a few more minutes after that, and guess what? It's Jeff Petrie sending a pass up to Patrick Kane, and this was a very, very good play. Oh, nice, nice, nice. He splits the D, comes right in on goal, and dangles it right through the goaltender. Patrick Kane, showtime, baby. That play wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Jeff Petrie putting his stick in there and intercepting the Buffalo Sabres play, quickly chipping it up for Kane. Just a great play all around. And then you have three minutes later, Dylan Larkin, who made it 3 0. That's his 31st goal on the year on the power play. The Wings finally getting some man advantage luck here as David Perron on the half boards is able to send it over to Raymond out in front for Larkin. It's the tic-tac-toe bumper play and it becomes 3-0 Detroit. Five minutes later, though, the Buffalo Sabres got their own power play goal, making it 3-1, and that was all she wrote. I mean, there's a shot thrown on goal, the rebound is off to the side, Zach Benson takes it and throws it right back to the point where Tage Thompson unleashes a vicious one-timer, and that's the goal. Those are all the goals. There are only four scored in the game here, and it's kind of funny because I think the TNT crew was saying during the intermission, yeah, no, it's not going to stay 3-1 the entire game, and then, oh yeah, it did. So, <laughs> there you go, eh? Shut down defending hockey from the Detroit Red Wings. Now, if you look at the money puck charts, you'll see a whole bunch of expected goals in this game towards the very end, and the reason it was like that is because the Wings had themselves a bunch of empty net opportunities, and they just could not bury it. I mean, what are you going to do? Sometimes it just doesn't go your way, right? But 3-1, with all the goals being scored in the first, like, 15 minutes of the game, certainly was not a my bingo card, but when it comes to the Wings, they will take it. Heading into tonight's matchup against the Buffalo Sabres, the Detroit Red Wings had a 37.8% chance at making the playoffs, but because they won this game, because they had the victory, Never mind it being in regulation, it would have been the same either way, but the Wings' playoff odds have jumped up to 49.9%. 12.1% increase here after Detroit beats Buffalo. Now, heading into the rest of the evening, we have a few extra games to pay attention to. Washington is playing the Ottawa Senators. Okay, that's a pretty important game. That's like the only one here that makes a lot of sense for Wings fans. That starts out at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. PST. So we'll keep an eye out for what happens in that game. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Mo Sider's absolute dominance, about Simone Edvinson being trusted to play in clutch situations, about Alex Lyon sealing the deal, shutting the door, keeping the Buffalo Sabres at bay, and the Red Wings coming out to a very hot start, getting the 3-0 lead, and Cruz controlling to a very important dub. This game may have just put the Wings right back in there in the mix, because they are now back in that playoff spot, at least for now. We'll see what the Washington Capitals have to say about that. Actually, I think, um, what is the tiebreaker? Right now, the Red Wings do not have the tiebreaker. Okay, if it's regulation wins, then yeah. The Wings have 27, the Washington Capitals currently have 28, so if the Caps win today, then my understanding is that they would be back into that postseason spot in a tie with the Red Wings, so lots of interesting stuff heading into the next few days here, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Detroit Red Wings defeating the Buffalo Sabres. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99, and bye.